I've been fishing for about 33 years roughly now. Started carp fishing at a very young age. Obviously you get your, your granddad took me along, took me to a little uh, brick pit. Didn't start fishing like the typical match style. Started fishing like little quiver tips, little nine foot quiver tips, stuff like that really. So and then built up. And then it came into the thing with, with the, uh, when the first ever monkey climbers come about. So I started doing a bit of uh, Bob Roberts, uh, block end feeders with a little bone and I was fishing only like beans and chickpeas back then because boilies weren't really around so I didn't know much about boilies back then. At the moment I'd say it's changed over the last couple of years I've been I've obviously gone with the old solid bag, bag approach this sort of be like a big big bed of bait and stuff like that but where I've sort of flipped between lakes and I've slotted with other anglers to use a little bag of bait seems to be the winning method for me at the moment. Uh, my go-to rig, if I'm just fishing anywhere, I'd say it's got to be the chod rig. Because you can basically chuck it anywhere. So if you're just fishing, dropping on fish and you ain't too sure what the bottom's like, you know a chod rig sort of gently nestles down the bunks anything, it will usually generate a bite. So that's usually probably my favourite out of anything. Uh, obviously turn up to a venue, if it's, if it's generally busy for me, angler, I mean I'll turn up late on a Friday night after work, so I generally have to slot in where I can, uh, but for me getting up early in the morning is the most important thing, having a look, see where they're showing, and then obviously watching if see if anyone's going home, and obviously I can move around onto, onto you know, possible showing fish or try and generate a bite. Uh, well, I try and end day you, you be carp fishing, so you're leaving your, your rigs out long periods of time. Obviously, not also, I don't get loads of time on the bank, so when I'm actually got my rods in the water, I want everything to be in top, you know, top condition, everything perfect. So if a fish comes along, hopefully I'll get a bite. Today it's got to be the uh, bullet common out of all this big lake. It's a fish that I've really wanted to catch for many years of being on there. And when I finally got it in the net, I couldn't believe I'd actually, actually got it. I was actually over the moment with it. Yeah, I think we've, as anglers, I think we all have groolers, don't we? You know that one session yeah, you get, you get either bird's nests, or you get a bird coming on, take your lines out, or you 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 know you lose two or three fish on a bounce and you can't work out why. But I think as anglers, we all, it's part of fishing. We all go through it, but you just got to pick yourself up, dust yourself off, and hopefully go again. Any that spring to mind that you can go? This one was a right shit up. I think there's one on uh, Brooklyn's Lake I was fishing, and I bought some new leader. I've literally lost about three spawns in a row which I don't generally do, and then I'd, I'd lost a couple of fish as well. Mine was an absolute cheese, because I was literally popped off the hook and it nestled itself down and down in the margins, I could see it, and it was a, it was a big common, easy mid 40. So it was like, quite depressing. <laughs> I'm a massive uh, free spirit fan. I've used uh, free spirit rods for many years now. I've actually rods I'm using at the moment high ashes. I've had them for probably nine, 20 years now. Uh, absolutely love them. Lovely, you know, a bit lovely to play fish on. They cast well, well made. I've also got a set of high ashes as well in 13 foot for obviously longer distance casting. So yeah, that's main two sets of rods I've ever used. Once I start getting to a lot of big car fishing.
Well, obviously, I'll turn up Friday night and the lake was fairly busy. I had to actually just do a night in a swim just down here. And I spoke to the chap who's fishing here. I said, look, mind you, if I just drop in, he said, yeah, no problem. Uh, then moved up to here. The main bowl of the lake is actually quite busy. So I thought to myself, at least if I'm down here, I've got this sort of arm of the lake to myself. So I can put a bit of bait out, watch for a few bubblers, and hopefully twice, uh, maybe a bite, hopefully, see what happens. For me, because like, like I've already said, it's, it's, now obviously fishing's getting a lot more busier. Obviously I try and work out where the other anglers are. But yeah, the, I mean your eyes is the most important thing. Go around, have a look, see if you see any shows. The bird life as well can tell at certain times of year, I personally think the carp will actually follow around groups of coots, especially winter time. Or, the, or should I say the coots will follow the carp around if they're stirring the bottom up. Uh, use your eyes. Also, I, I believe as well, smell as well. I think you can smell carp. Some of the carp are washing out. You can actually smell, smell them. So that's something a lot of people miss as well. But I think the nature, what's going around the lake is so important. Obviously, what the bird life are doing, the wind. I think the moon plays a massive part. Air temperature as well. So if it's massive change in temperature, and obviously air pressure. If you've got a massive uh, low pressure coming, you know they're going to be free off the bottom. Uh, during the colder months, you know that the carp will, will sit on a deeper pit, will sit higher up in the levels. So that's when you've got to change your tactics a little bit. Fish for where they are actually sitting in the layers. Well, that is a tough one, isn't it? <laughs> uh, obviously, like I said, I've been fit. I'm just an ev yeah, I'm not nothing special angler. I'm an everyday angler. Obviously, the attention to detail is, is something I can bring to the table. Uh, there's loads of other people like me who turn up late. Oh, we, you know, most just do work. We're not like the, you know, the sponsored anglers, so we have to turn up slotting. And I'm good at sort of moving around, and I will change tactics a lot to try and generate a bite. So, so I do switch things around a lot, and obviously move as well to show fish, which is most most important thing. Not to be my static and do do the same things. It's like a famous saying, you are, you ask all the same same questions, you're going to get the same answers. So you have to, you know, change things up, up a bit.